Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that little video about our storyboard release. Uh, just a reminder, we are having people ask questions live today. So if you are interested in joining us live on stage, excuse me, got to minimize a window. If you're interested in joining us live on stage, add the word live to the front of your question in the ask a question tab and someone will invite you on. Right now we are full, so please stop trying to join because it's making a little yellow thing pop up in front of my buttons. However, we're so happy to have you back here. So um, we are going to begin right now the live Q&A with Andrew Mason, our yep. CEO. So let's get rolling. Hey Laura. Hey everybody. That was a recorded. That no, that was really me. That was all live, including the transitions. All right. Let's get started with a written question that has been submitted by our audience. If our producer could bring up the first question, and then we will start in with some of these live folks that are backstage. However, we're so happy to have you back. So. Um, we are oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we talked about this. You were going to read the question. <laughs> it's fine. We're doing it live. Uh, this is a question from Michael uh, about stock footage integration. I do think we saw a little glimpse of this. Would you like to speak to this factoid? Yeah, so we are releasing uh, stock footage integration. It's free. Um, with the, uh, on, there's a version of it on the, on the free plans and it's free on the paid plans, uh, for sure it includes, uh, just like B-roll stock footage includes backgrounds, includes music and sound effects, images. And then we also integrated Jeffy and Unsplash with hopefully more libraries to come. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Uh, let's bring on our first live guest, Jay. Not our Jay, but a different Jay. Hi hey, there, Jay. Jay. So uh, this this I uh, jumped in a little bit late, and I was um, first of all, thank you so much for all these incredible integrations. I was losing my mind. Um, I had to step away for a moment because I was having uh, heart palpitations at all the cool <laughs> things that were being added. Um, dark mode first. Thank you, my eyes. Thank you, and I'm sure everybody else too. Um, I have a question surrounding the coloring and grading and, and things like that with the new additions that you're adding in there. Um, do we also see any integrations in the future with DaVinci? Um, because we all know that's a powerhouse for, for color editing. Um, is that something that, that we can see where we can export, whereas we only have like Premiere and things like that right now? So I think there's, I can't remember off the top of my head how you do it, but I think if you export using the Final Cut XML export, that can actually be opened in DaVinci. So you can you can do a timeline export. Yeah. Um, we should do a better job in the product at clarifying that and a better job in these Q&As of answering it specifically. <laughs> but if you if you search around uh, or, or follow up with us afterwards, we can we can make sure we find that. I know there's forum threads on it. Awesome, I'll that, perfect. I'll put that on my list of things to do a tip about. Excellent, I appreciate the help, guys. And thank again, you. thank you for all the changes. Totally, yeah. thanks, Jay. Let's move on to maybe, yes, a text question from Aaron about lower thirds and fonts. Uh, what options are we gonna have in Storyboard? Yeah, that can all be customized. You can uh, choose from anything, any of the free uh, library of hundreds of or thousands of Google fonts, and you can upload your own custom fonts as well. That's actually in the app today. Um, and then, and then you can create custom templates that uh, of lower thirds, including using the ones that are in our, our gallery to set them up any way that you want. Awesome. Hope that answered your question. It's pretty cool. I've played around with it. Works very well. So first, here's a question from Rolando. Is there a way to make the video or images within Descript with rounded corners? So softening those edges. Yes, the, that'll be a feature that ships with, uh, with Storyboard, um, for sure. Awesome. 
Uh, asked and answered. Question and ask a question. All right. I see we have some more folks backstage. So first, uh, from Rolando. John or way to make I, if you want to let me know your name, you don't have to, but you are in here as I speak nerd. If either of you are ready and would like to join yeah. us, we'd love to bring you on. Mr. Nerd, are you available? Hi. Hey, good morning. Good morning. morning. Thank you for joining. No, thank you guys. That's an amazing value add for uh, with the stock footage and uh, templates is going to be a massive, uh, massive help for a lot of people. Um, so thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, and I might have missed it because I was talking in the chat earlier, but will the pricing structure uh, for you guys be changing uh, with the new features that are rolling up? Uh, no, pricing structure stays the same. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of uh quick hit and questions and asked and answered answers. Cool. Thank you. That's what I said. All right. Well, thank you. Did you have any other thoughts or questions you wanted to share while we have you here? If not, that's um, okay. We can just. I can, give you, I can give a testimonial. I'm new to video editing and the tools made it uh, gone from a massive intimidation to just a fantastic, uh, smooth, easy transition. And I do love the, uh, the learn help center that's actually built into the app. That thing with the, the way you guys have done the bite size, like two minute video breakups of done by topic. Like it's amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, Shout great. out to Harmony. Shout out to Harmony and the biz dev team for those. I'm so glad that you find them helpful. Oh yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All right. Let's bring on Terry, uh, Okay. Well, up next, we have a few more guests backstage. I see uh, Mark and Jordan Higgs. Uh, are either of you ready? Okay. We have Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hello. Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for joining, you to, uh, joining us today. If you wouldn't mind just muting your stream in the background um, so we don't get a little bit of an echo here, that would be lovely. But thank you. So what is your question today? I am a, uh, I'm a librarian at a university, and we would love to provide this service to our students. Um, here in an educational context, uh, accessibility for users with disabilities is a priority for us. Um, so I'd be interested to hear if this new version will be supporting, uh, especially the WCAG standards, uh, and how it will be supporting users with disabilities, because uh, we have a whole office that will check for that compatibility before we could even uh, start with this product. So if you could provide any information about that, that'd be great. Um, if Andrew L. is in the chat, um, we should bring um, him live because he might be the best person to speak to the details of, of that. Um, I can tell you we've made huge improvements in accessibility with this release in terms, in particular, of keyboard access is is much improved. Um, so we, we, we think that there's full keyboard access to everything in the app. Um, there's still more work to do, but it's, uh, it's something, as we were rebuilding Descript from the ground up, some of these things like dark mode and keyboard access were things that we were really trying to take into account. Um, if Andrew doesn't join, just um, you know, maybe in this backstage room, share your email and we can follow up with you and, and answer the specific questions. All right, well, Let's move on to our next guest again, Mark, just on the restream back end here in this private chat window, feel free to share your email. And if you can't see that, just, uh, you know, respond to our customer service uh, email, uh, general one. Oh, it looks like we have someone that can get in touch with you specifically. So you will be hearing from us regardless. Thank you for that awesome question. All right. So who do we have up on deck? I believe we have Jordan, if you are comfortable coming on screen. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Jordan. Hi. Yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, you know, I've as someone who is a marketing manager, and I work with, you know, influencers and posting a lot of different platforms um, all over the place. One of the things that's important to me um, is being able to have a lot of control over my export settings. Um, you know, whether I work with 10 bit footage or, um, you know, color grading and 4k or 1080p for, you know, various uh, to avoid compression and things like that when posting different platforms. Um, I didn't know if there are any, um, I know we have like the high quality um, selection when you're exporting. I didn't know if we had any plans on, you know, maybe expanding that a little bit more for a little bit more control. 
Yeah, that's a great question. So there's two versions of export that we have. We have um, what we call local export, where it's rendering the files on your computer. Um, and there's a lot of customization there, although I'm sure there's more that we could add. And then there's what, what we call publishing. And you'll notice with Storyboard, we're leaning much more heav heavily into publishing, but that's basically a cloud export process that's just incredibly fast um, because we can take advantage of computers uh, in the cloud to, um, to, to make it faster um, and less taxing on your machine. Um, so we're, we're definitely either with Storyboard release or shortly after going to be adding some higher quality export options. And the, what, what are the others? Uh, we're we're going to have um, a bunch of color grading controls mm -hmm. in the app that should hopefully be really useful for part of what you're talking about. Um, I'm not sure about 10 bit or, uh, or, 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 or bit that, that I don't even know how to like categorize what you're asking. I'm out of yeah, my Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just when, you know, especially for like DS, DSLR cameras and, you know, any, anything higher, like cinematography stuff. I know, um, a lot of people record in those flat profiles that let you have a little bit more range when color grading. Um, I'm a big believer in, you know, you don't always have to use the hardest tool of like Premiere or, you know, any of the other suites. And, you know, if Discord, or if uh, Descript gets it done for me, you know, A to B as fast as possible, um, that's that's the tool to use. So I've really enjoyed it. Um, even though it doesn't have all the, all the features, it, it has 90% of them so far for me. Nice. Well, um, that might be something we could build shortly after launch if it's not in there. So stay in touch and um, just let's chat in Discord or on our feedback board. Cool. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you having Thanks, me Thanks, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. All right, let's see who we have on deck here. I believe we have Art. I just got a chat, by the way, that said we will support Lutz for Jordan. I thought I so, thought we were, and I, I wasn't sure if, if I was misremembering that, so I didn't want to speak. All right. That's we how have, you bring flat col color prof pri profiles up to full. Yeah, I know we were talking about um, supporting that a while back from, anyway. That'll be, I'm really excited about that as well. So uh, we have Art here. Hi, Art. Thank you for joining hey. us. Thanks for having me. Uh, so it's good to hear that you do support Lutz because that was a side question that I had. Uh, but uh, so I, I do a lot of video editing, mostly in Premiere. Uh, and uh, I'm wondering if there is going to be uh, an option for syncing audio because I always record off-camera audio on a separate device and then sync those um, in post. Yeah, it's funny you bring this up. This is one of these features that's like right on the, do we get this in in time for the release or does it come right after the release? Because mm -hmm. while you can cr you can definitely create multi-cam sequences in Descript mm -hmm. and you can create all the tracks and line everything up, you have to do it manually right now. So if stuff doesn't all start at zero, you just have to like zoom in and look at the waveforms and it's, it's kind of a drag. Um, so rest assured that's on our, that's on our minds and we, we, we do it ourselves and realize how ridiculous it is to need to go in there and manually line that stuff up. So we'll have a fix um, for you for you by, by the launch of Storyboard or soon after. Excellent. That's great to hear. That's all I've got. Thanks for having me. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much. Thanks, Art. And I'm really excited for the, if we do AI syncing of some sort, that would be lovely. All right. Let's see. We have some text questions we're going to pop in here from the chat. Uh Let's see here. Joshua asks, what, if any, impact will this update have on file organization, such as compositions, project files? I know the whole way we structure things. Is that changing with Storyboard? Yeah, great question. So um, we are making a change there. Um, in the What we're going to do is compositions, and you'll organize your compositions in the right sidebar now. And the rest of your project files will be in what we're calling the media library drawer that includes a tab for your project files and could be organized into folders and previewed directly from there. Or you can switch to any of the cloud media libraries that we have integrated. So we're excited about the change and how it fits into Storyboard. It just feels like a more intuitive and faster way to, to access your files, but are really looking forward to feedback from people on, on how it feels during, during this uh, early access period over the next uh, several weeks. Great. I think we have one more chat question coming up. 
Let's see. Will I be able animating? To... Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. You read this. You read this one. Read it. I really want <laughs> please. to uh, please, please. animate or add emojis to our video as this is uh, possible with micro content. Um, yes, this as well is something. Um, what you'll see, by the way, if you so so there's a bunch of stuff that's not in the app today. Um, the, in the preview release today, but it will be by the time that we do the public release. And if you go to feedback.descript.com uh, in the next couple of hours, you'll see all this stuff listed that we are considering adding between now and that release. So stuff like this is on there. And if it's important to you, we really encourage you to go and vote that stuff up because there's going to be some stuff that we definitely know that we need to do and some stuff that's like on the margin and we're really looking for user feedback. And when you say vote stuff up, are you speaking to Discord or using the feature request? No, no, no. Yeah. If you go to feedback.descript.com on our yeah. on our kind of feature request board. Awesome. All right. I believe we have on deck another live participant, Dan Gordon. Hi, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, I think I speak for everybody when I say we just shut up and take my money. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is this is incredible. Why I do you have all that cash, man? <laughs> it's it's fake. It's, it's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, right. You got a bug out bag under there too. <laughs> uh, I got a lot of things, Andrew. I, I just can't talk about it in a live stream. Um, Laura knows them. So, the, um, like, I I got into Descript because I first heard about um, voiceover. And then it's like, oh, wait, it does all this other stuff, too. And, uh, you know, and I think we can also all hear uh, Adobe crying right now because they're about to lose tens of thousands of dollars with uh, pr with Premiere. But is there anything new coming up with voiceover? Because it hasn't, I mean, how do I say this? It hasn't quite lived up to what I, you know, hoped. It isn't oh, say more about that. What's Where are we um, letting you down? That it After about four or five sentences, it's really clear that it's not a human talking. And look, I, I know I'm asking oh, a lot, yeah. but my dream is that I could do just like short little videos or, you know, I, I, I could write something out. I could port it over to my exec and she could, uh, you know, have a VA take care of creating like little spoken um, voice grams. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, I think you're, Totally, that like that feedback totally makes sense. Um, overdub our text to speech technology. Oh, sorry, over, it's, overdub, not overdub. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a it's a long game for us, and um, and it's something that we constantly have people working on and improving the quality of. Mm -hmm. A lot of our focus right now has been on um, has been on this correction use case. So people who are recording organically recorded audio, and. and well, sorry, that was sentence didn't really make sense, but I think you know what I mean. People <laughs> I are just know. like re recording with their mouths and then they want to change a couple of words and making sure that it sounds good there and it blends in on either side. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, but, but, but the long form text to speech, you're totally right. Like with a lot of voices, it can be um, after, after several sentences, it starts to feel like um, more, more obvious depending on, the centrality of the voiceover and the content that you're producing. Um, so we uh, we're, we're we're always going to be working on that. We we have some stuff in uh, some new versions of overdub and improvements to the training process actually can make a big difference because there are some overdub voices you can get it right where it sounds just unbelievably realistic even in longer form. Um, and so a lot of it is just improving the training process. Um, so all I can tell you is that we'll just keep chipping away and you know uh, and, and and stay tuned. It's something we care we we see as central to the product that we're building, and we'll become more and more deeply integrated and allow you to do cooler and cooler things. Okay, well I'll expect an update next week. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> No, thanks, thanks a lot. I'm just, I'm just so pleased with, with what you've created and just bring a lot of people into it and excited for, for, for what you guys do next. So thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Be you, well. Dan. Yeah. Also like we're, we're also excited with overdub and, and storyboard. It enables this really crazy use case. We have this new write mode where you can just put it in there and then you can, you can write all your long form uh, overdub and then 
and then later you can use it as scratch media that you can then lay you, you can lay out all your visuals on on using scenes and then later replace the scratch with the actual media so it lets you push that recording process all the way to the end after you've done all your edits and it's really like a the, the this whole process of writing and organizing your visuals at the same time is a completely different way of working that um, really feels empowering, creatively empowering. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to learn a little more about that, we have your announcement video about Replace Script Track on YouTube. So if you want to hear some more details on that feature, and we'll eventually be creating more educational content around it as well. Um, let's see. I think we have another live speaker on deck. Let's bring on Oliver. Hi, hey, Oliver. Oliver. Thank you for waiting. Oh, uh, no problem. Um, honestly, Descript has been a great product. I've been using it for uh, maybe about six months now, and it's been a total game changer. One of the things that I've used it for mostly is, say, I have like an hour-long track. I'll cut it down to about uh, 10 minutes with all the good cuts inside of it and then export that to Premiere Pro. So with all the things that you guys are adding, what can we look for to see that's still exportable? Like mostly around non-destructive edits. You know, I, I know I can export it to MV4 and get the whole thing, but the non-destructive edits were great. Yeah, uh, great question. So philosophically, the way we think of export to external timelines like Premiere, Final Cut, or Resolve, or any of the, the audio DAWs is... Um, is that people who are doing exports are probably using Descript to just do a rough cut, but they're not doing finishing types of things, mixing or um, or or transitions, and supporting those features. It's often like proprietary Descript stuff that we've built, and is not simple to figure out how to export. Um, so we really care about enabling that use case. We think it's really cool, but um, we kind of try to make it work so that the ba you can you can do a rough cut so, and, and export that but that's but um, sadly most of the new stuff that we've seen i mean obviously like if you export stock media and stuff like that if you add stock media and stuff like that that will make it into the export um and maybe some things you add from templates or whatever but it's really just going to be like a multi-track set of it's going to look like a multi-track set of clips and gotcha so it's like puzzle stuff. piecing yeah. videos together effectively is what you can get from an export then yeah exactly perfect well that's great to hear it's uh all around it's a great tool and uh honestly that that's one of my favorite features so i'm glad to see it's going to still keep going thanks very awesome much. yeah thanks oliver thank you all right let's see i think we have a chat question coming up next all right, from Steve here. Uh, why don't we speak to the updates with Multicam? Yeah, um, we're really excited about how Multicam works with, interacts with scenes. You kind of got a taste of this from looking at the, the video demo that Andrew L. did earlier. But basically what you'll be able to do is, like if you think about the way that Multicam works in a, traditional timeline editor, if you've used one, it's really kind of heavy handed. You have to create, first of all, your, your nested sequence of some sort or another, and then you have a way of selecting which layer you want to bring to the top. The way it's going, the way it works in storyboard is that you, um, you basically arrange your layout the way that you would, you would arrange a slide layout. Like we really took inspiration from slides and how we thought about this. And then you can reuse that layout over and over again everywhere that you want to use it. So if you have something like you're you're doing a, a video interview, a remote video interview with 12 participants, setting up that kind of thing with storyboard is trivially easy and just setting up all of your different kind of scene templates and then switching back and forth between them. It's really cool and I think brings a traditionally power user feature like multicam into reach for um, for people that have used slides, basically. 
and I've been playing around with it in the last few weeks, and it's it's it it actually is really so much easier than doing it in a timeline editor. So I'm very happy about it. All right, we have another chat question on deck here. Okay, let's see what we have next from the chat. This is from Georgia. Um, yeah, community library of templates. Can we share templates with our team? If you want to speak to how that's going to function. Yeah, so templates, uh, you are the, basically the way that templates work is that it's a special kind of a Descript project. And just like any other project, you can keep it private to you, you can share it with specific people, or you can share it with everybody on your team. Um, so that all works right away. Um, you can also just take a link to your template and share it with, and, and make that a public link and share it with anybody so that they can get a landing page for it and copy that template to their own uh, Descript workspace. Um, and in terms of having a community library, that's something that uh, feels like a really natural next step to, for us to think about. But right now, this first version of templates is, um, is the, the bones of the feature and should hopefully be really e useful to get people started. But it's another area of, of long-term investment for us. Awesome. All right. I think we have time for a few more live questions, maybe one or two more chat questions, and then we're going to wrap up. So thank you so much again. Who do we have on deck that would like to join Dave, I believe? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, Dave. For, first, I'm not a dentist. Uh, I, what I'd love to know <laughs> thank God. is... Um, because this is such a, a fabulous product, I run a member site, a membership site where I teach people how to podcast. And my students are like, when are you going to add a Descript course? So when I go to your YouTube channel, I keep learning kind of like, look, you can edit text and it does the thing. And I'm like, yeah, I, I got that part. Where can I get a deep dive on like from like, here's a drive, here's a whatever the thing is. And then when you drag the two files, it's called this. Like, where do I get a soup to nuts? deep dive on Descript. You got to make it for us, Dave. Your okay. students demand it and now we <laughs> demand it. You know? That's what I'm working on, actually. Um, uh, no, we're, we're uh, Laura, maybe you have an answer. All, all I can tell you is we're, re we're overhauling the entire right. documentation and help center as part of this new release. Yes. Um, but what would be the best answer for that right now, Laura, do you think? So we have some videos that we haven't published externally yet that kind of are are on at least the drive organization side of stuff so we can definitely i you know because this this relaunch is happening we hadn't posted those live because we are going to be redoing all that documentation um but in the interim we could probably post those on youtube but that is definitely like our absolute priority right now our whole team is working to get all this new help documentation and to improve that kind of soup to nuts stuff. So we're going to, that's the whole plan, really. We're going to have the soup to nuts options. We're going to then also have sort of micro options similar to what I'm doing with the Descript tips, because we fully understand that that's a, that's a gap right now. So um, yeah, we are <laughs> working on it and appreciate the need for it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. All right. Let's see here. Who do we have on deck? Um, sorry, there's a lot in the chat here. We got a few folks. Let me see. I believe maybe I'm just going in order of how I see people here. Uh, Tom, is Tom ready? Nope. Yeah, I'm right here. Hi, hey, Tom. Tom. Hey, how are you guys? Great. How are you? Great. Doing good. Uh, I just wanted to ask about studio sound there. So it sounds really good for the most part, but sometimes it can sound a little kind of tinny, depending on how what people use if they're using AirPods or not really using a wired headset. So is there uh, an update that's going to be coming out to make it sound a little kind of less robotic in a sense? Yeah, um, great question. Studio Sound is another kind of long-term area of investment for us, and we have another uh, updated version of the model that we're getting ready to release relatively soon. Um, what we found is there's some, it's interesting because there's like classes or categories of audio where 
it's incredible. Um, and then others where we need to continue to train it to, um, to make it handle that specific class better. And some of the stuff that I've heard um, is pretty remarkable um, in terms of th that's coming up in terms of its ability to repair specific kinds of uh, problems with sound. Um, also, like funny enough, one of the areas where studio sound doesn't do very well right now is on audio that's already high quality. Um, that's one of the areas that we're, uh, that we're fixing so that you can just reliably apply it. Some people like to have it on just all the time so that they, they don't need to think about it. And this makes sure that it'll adapt well to, to high quality audio. So rest assured, that's another area where we'll continue to improve and pay a lot of attention to, but glad you're liking it at least somewhat. Oh yeah. It still sounds really good, but I just wanted to see if there's a need for it. So thank you. Great. Awesome. Yeah, really good question. Thank you. Uh, let's. All right. All right. Who's let's... next? I think we have on deck uh, Nolan, a friend of, I was about to say friend of the pod, friend of the company, Nolan. <laughs> Would you like to come on board? Hi, Nolan. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Laura. Hey, Nolan. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Uh, great update today. Amazing uh, new features. Um, I would love to hear some more just about the AI green screen. I know we touched on that really quickly. You know, the AI tools like Studio Sound have completely changed our production process at Chili Piper with our remote video ed editing and filming and stuff. We've like raised the standard of everybody's audio to the same level now, and it's incredible. But we want to do more with visuals and some green screen stuff, but we're all remote. So I'm curious how that could work, and I'm, I would just love to hear more about it. Yeah, we're really excited about it too. Um, great question. It's uh, it's built in house by uh, by the incredible team of researchers that we have here, um, and it works like you know much uh, like like the other AI stuff that we have kind of uh, eerily well. It's it's a it's a really simple background removal feature where it just automatically detects the background and and removes it. Um, and that's pretty much all there all there is to it. It, should, it looks a lot better than like the real time stuff that you get in um, in Zoom or something like that. It's uh, we also, by the way, have a, a separate chroma key effect. So if you are on a green screen and you just want to do some real time right. Right. background removal, you can do that as well. But this thing that we built is AI and doesn't doesn't need a green screen. Awesome, awesome. And then follow up question to that. Uh, if I remove the background into script and I want to take it somewhere else, is there a way to export that with like an alpha channel or Ooh. something like that? I don't know. Does anyone know? Somebody chat me. On I Slack was actually I had the same question at some point. So if anyone does know that's on our team, uh, I would love to know the same thing. Uh, just let us know if we get if we'll, well if anyone wants to chat that to us in our uh, group chat. Let us know, and we can definitely follow up with you about that because I want to know. Yeah, awesome. thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, uh, I think we have time for two more people. We are about at the hour, but you know if you, so if, you know if you have to drop all of this, will be available on YouTube after the event, and uh, if you registered, it will be sent to you as well. So um, we can hang on for a few more minutes and get the next person that's backstage here. Um, okay, we got Marco and then David. So Hey, Marco. Hey, guys. Oh, I just got a 2x. Uh, you know, the gentleman who brought up the idea about training materials. You guys are moving so fast and innovating so quickly. Um, and I've only been on the platform for about six months. But I got to tell you the, you know, revealing all of the cool features and functions, um, you know, that would be really great. So um, I think it's worth the investment. The thing that I'd really like to talk or get your thinking about is for those of us that have tons of assets, there's never been any way to sort of like say, okay, let's have, let's, let's make use of a database or something to do a content management system that like integrates with something that's as cool as what you've got going for storyboard. So what about an integration with Notion or something else that's open source that, you know, could be a cool way of managing the back end of all of the different assets that we have and then 
the script becomes kind of like the funnel that we like pull everything in together and then make cool pieces. Got any thoughts about that? Like, like, um, what would be in Notion, for well, example? Notion's really kind of like a user-friendly flat file database. So it's a way to go and put all of you know the assets that we have scattered all over the different places and you know impose order on the chaos. But I'm only suggesting right. that one possibility. There's many on that yeah. right. to be free and open source. I think that's similar to yeah. like Wistia I'd love to and talk. Other... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about it. Like, stop by Discord and we could brainstorm a little bit more about what you have in mind. By the way, uh, have you tried Coda? It's better than Notion. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Check out Coda. <laughs> okay, thanks. thanks. It'll make so Notion uh, feel like a, like a toy. Coda-centric company here. <laughs> Once again, mind-blowing upgrade. Super exciting. Um, thanks. Totally. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks, Marco. Awesome. All right. So we are... Get, we have one more live guest we're going to bring on and then we do have to wrap up. So if we didn't get to your questions, you know, uh, always join us on Discord. Uh, I believe we have uh, the caption for that somewhere in here so people know where to go. Um, you know, request features at feedback.descript.com. We are so happy to hear from all of you. All right. Um, I will. Let's bring on David. Hi, David. Hey, everyone. I am calling in from Kenya. Wow, uh, thank you. And, I, and I've been a Descript user, more or less, doing tutorials and all that. So I'd like to find out, uh, are there any new editing features for the audio? And in this sense, what I think is, can I just select a piece of audio and maybe add a reverb, uh, add an echo? I've always wanted to do that, but when you do that, it's added to the whole audio timeline. Right, or it's at, it's either added to the master or it's added to the track, and you just want yes. to add it to a specific clip. Uh, to just yeah. a specific selection in the timeline. Right. So, um, so I believe we have clip level audio effects coming I, I, soon. Laura, what are you going to say? No, I was going to say the same thing. I think I think I remember that, and. Um... No, that's all I had to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the yeah the video effects are definitely um, that we've added are, are I believe clip level, and I think the audio ones um, are are as well, or they will be shortly thereafter. Um, broad, more broadly, like we think there's a lot to be for podcasters to be excited about in in this release. The overall design system reflects everything we've learned about. Um, building a doc-based media editor over the last five plus years and should just be more intuitive and accessible for folks. Um, we know everybody's excited about dark mode. Um, there's a new slip tool in the timeline um, and just some little ways in which stuff is, has been reorganized should be um, like, like the way the script toolbar works and the, and the editing modes in the script. Um, beyond that, it's we're, you know, back to the question about documentation that Marco had. Um, we see this as kind of a new foundational state for Descript that we'll then build on top of. And, um, and b b both in terms of stuff changing less r radically every year, but also um, it lets us start building some of the things that we're really excited about for podcasters, like a more integrated sequence uh, editing experience and compositions. Um, so, so all of that stuff is now, um, is now kind of coming up in our roadmap very quickly that I think podcasters will be quite excited about. Okay. That's awesome. And finally, a very awesome release. That's all I can say. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we're, um, we're kind of, uh, it, there's a lot in it really. We're really excited to have, to be able to share it with you all today and, um, and can't wait to see what people think once they get their hands on it it's really like this whole scenes thing is really quite incredible and we can't wait to see what you guys think yeah i agree and that's it for us today so thank you all so much for joining again if you didn't get your question answered reach out to us join our discord um you can always get help here at help.descript.com feature requests at feedback.descript.com 
and join us on Discord, please. Discord is a really, really great place to collaborate with our community, and we frankly love it. So thank you all again so much, and we are going to end the stream. Have a great one. Thanks, everyone.